Hello, this is Ignatius 500, and I am Jeff Ryan Miraflor. We meet Ignatius at his house in Loyola. There in a room on the top floor, he's recovering from an injury caused by a cannonball in the defense of Pamplona. In the first chapter of his autobiography, Ignatius tells us of his struggles with the injury and with himself, and how God is going to take advantage of that battle to become the true Lord of his life. In short, he tells us about the discernment of the dreams that God is offering him over his previous aspirations. Ignatius undergoes a painful operation for his recovery without realizing that God is taking advantage of the opportunity to open a much greater horizon for him. Ignatius is going to meet Jesus through the simple act of reading. He asks for worldly adventure books to pass the time because he isn't willing to change so easily. However, in that house, there are only two books, one on the life of Christ and one on the lives of the saints. A coincidence? It seems not. These are the miracles that God does not want to openly claim. When Ignatius stops reading and he pauses and thinks, sometimes he thinks about what he has read and other times he reminisces about his previous life, what attracted him, his desires, his plans for the future. In both cases, Ignatius ponders on great things, courting a woman of great beauty or imitating the great saints. Fundamentally, Ignatius continues to put himself in the center. He imagines his own life as a play in which he is the author, the director, and the actor. But he doesn't realize that deep down, God is the one who is silently directing his performance. At the beginning of his conversion, God accompanies Ignatius, respecting his personality and way of being. This young man who could convince his small battalion not to surrender to the oncoming mass of French soldiers in Pamplona won't follow Jesus in a simple and unseen way. He wants something big. He wants to continue being himself without anything or anyone changing his plans. How often does God silently enter our lives? And how many times do we silence his voice, distorting it with our own dreams and desires? Ignatius will have to learn to let God speak and show him the way forward. There's still a long way ahead. In Loyola, God has managed to enter Ignatius's life, which is no small feat. And he has changed the plans that he had for his life at the court. Now Ignatius dreams of living in Jerusalem to be where Jesus himself lived and died. But he has to leave Loyola without giving much explanation to his family because he knows that if he explains his conversion, they won't understand him. He has to go, and he will do so. The important thing for him now is to set out, trusting that the initiative is from God. Maybe you too want to do great things for the Lord. Can you trust in him?